is dead. I think there's something to be said. So, like, when we're, when we're talking about these things about, like, in late-stage capitalism, now we're talking about tech that um, that is literally being able to identify you, which is beyond the point. Like, you know, it, we're suffering – we're, we're, we're facing a generation where, you know, housing prices are more expensive than ever. Billionaires are more richer than ever. And – you know, I mean, this is this is the end stage result of, of late stage capitalism. Sometimes, you know, you're, a lot of people are kind of just dealing with the reality of that. And I, I don't know of those who like are in therapy. I'm personally, I do go to therapy, and I do and I do support therapy. Um, but there is something to be said about. Uh, therapy as like a mental solution to feeling better in a late stage capitalist system. And people were talking about this not too long ago, actually. Uh, this is like probably even back in the fifties, this started coming up. Well, here's the thing. As a background, I've done therapy as well. I do think there are uh, cert most certainly some benefits. Um, but without a, a broader context, I feel like um, a lot of it can be uh, less helpful than if you do have a materialist analysis. As a background, I have studied psychology before. Um, I have actually done like therapy sessions with people, uh, such as uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, DBT, uh, mindfulness as well. And uh, I'm on record saying many times that if we did not live in under, under capitalist society, the DSM, known as the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, which is known in the West essentially as the Psychology Bible, uh, would look much different. Now, this is the manual that has various mental illnesses and various groupings, such as the infamous Cluster B, which uh, involves borderline histrionic, antisocial, and narcissistic personality disorders, um, known as the dramatic category, for example. Uh, and yeah, in this something like like I knew, like I, I figured out like recently actually was um like schizophrenia is like primarily a Western disorder. Like, it's not something that happens in the Eastern countries. Which is like, um, which, is, which is, which is actually, which is, up, you could see like how that's a product of like our society. You can look, look, look that up. Google that. No, I'm just, I, I forget. I'm checking my notes. Uh, hmm. It seems pretty consistent. Um, it, does, it, it is it is global, but but again, like there's a lot of different factors. <laughs> diagnosis rate, um, criteria used for diagnosis, uh, references for criteria. Um, there's a lot to unpack when it comes to that, but. Uh, you know, don't forget um, just because something you know, just because something isn't exclusive to the West uh, we live under I mean, I hate to say it we live under a global capitalist uh, world well, that's why I'm saying um That there's that there's evidence for I mean that for at least like in the Western countries like that's including Europe. Yeah. You you whatever you would like consider the traditional like Western countries, but like there's 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 you can you can find like uh, backups on this. Yeah. So yeah, you can see. find information on this, but. Okay. You know, it, this is not like this is not like a new phenomenon by any means. Just watch this. I decided to go into mental health because I actually wanted to help people. I don't know why people do this. They just like sit there and react to like I hate this. They just sit there and like with their face, just going like, 
watching a video. But then here I am in my masters, and it turns out that the reason people are so bad is because they're having perfectly normal responses to their environment. That environment being poverty and exploitation. And it's like, I don't want to be a therapist. Because I'm supposed to tell this person that they're not having a perfectly normal response to their horrific environment because of late stage capitalism. It's like if I teach them to cope in this unhealthy, toxic environment, that's just keeping the system as it is. See, I'm not doing too great. So first and foremost, um, the first thing off the bat is looking at this from a materialist analysis, any, any kind of study clearly indicates one of the, one of the most, one of the most uh, prolific diagnoses is depression and are <coughs> usually linked together. Um, and this is incredibly well documented to have a direct uh, uh, link to your income, to your income level, to your material conditions. There is a direct link to that. And essentially what happens a lot of the time is <clears throat> the therapy is essentially designed to, instead of, instead of radicalize you, and, and cause you to take that depression and anxiety that you are feeling internally and turn it into revolutionary fervor. Um, because, you know, if your material con conditions are poor, you should be feeling depression and anxiety. That's the normal feeling, like you said, Greg. Um, but if you go to therapy and you're given various coping mechanisms, you are essentially being taught how to live with your misery, so to speak. That's not saying depression and anxiety is solely linked to that, but a lot of a lot of these diagnoses are people who are responding correctly to the conditions of their life as is. You know, the problem, well, the problem with like modern like practices, like you know, especially like CBT, it's super, it's hyper individualized. It's like live with your live with the collapsing society around you just focus on yourself it's all about you and it's not about you know thinking about helping others which i think like um i think we kind of like shift like our mentality to like focusing outwards onto other people as instead of like go going inwards is kind of where we're um where where we're falling. that's 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 just the indi hyper individualist materialist uh, capitalist mentality, and well, this goes back to the fifties. I mean, yeah. Our culture is concerned primarily with production and consumption of things. That is what counts, and the selling of things, which is the intermediary between the two acts. And in this process of being primarily concerned with things, the ever-increasing production, the ever-increasing consumption, we ourselves transform ourselves into things without knowing it. We lose our individuality in spite of the fact that we talk a lot about it. We follow leaders who don't lead. We believe that we are acting on our own impulses and convictions and opinions when actually we are manipulated by a whole industry, by slogans, and yet nobody has any true aim. We are alienated from ourselves. We don't feel much, certainly we don't feel intensely. All we are after is not to be different, and we are frightened to death to be just two feet away from the herd. And yet we are deceiving ourselves about this reality by talking all the time in terms of our traditional heritage of the Judeo-Christian tradition of humanistic philosophy of individuality and whatnot. What is the role of the mental health movement and psychiatry in this situation? Are they helping? Well, I would hope they did. But I'm not so convinced. I'm sure some help, and some want to help. 
But I'm afraid there is a great danger also in the mental health movement today as there is in psychiatry, psychoanalysis, and psycho psychology. I'm afraid the role of the mental health movement and the role of psychology and psychiatry are to help to adjust man somewhat more, to make him function more smoothly. You might say psychology and mental health today is in danger, and psychologists are in danger to become the priests of the industrial system. It's getting pretty bad. <clears throat> yeah, and um, <clears throat> I mean, the thing is, there's there's a lot of factors to this that a lot of people don't try to consider. Because of our individualism, a lot of people do lose that sense of community, especially in the hyper-partisan environment that has been manufactured for us. And there are studies that show this as well, that, you know, when people become isolated, they, they are more susceptible to mental health struggles. Um, in addition to that, just the general, the general capitalist framework, think about... I always think, would, would, would someone meet the criteria for a diagnosis if they didn't have significant factors in their lives? Um, so for example, when it comes to depression and anxiety, um, let's take the average working person, I'll use Canada. So the average household right now is about $40,000 in debt without a mortgage. So let's put $40,000 in debt. Let's put a mortgage on top of that. Now let's put stagnant wages. Let's put the increase of the cost of living across the board. Uh, in addition to that, let's put the additional anxieties of imperialism, also known as the highest form of capitalism, in the current, um, the current world we're living under. Nuclear war. Nuclear, nuclear war and let's make let's add all of these stressors to a normal person now mind you put out the up, in the mk ultra shit right if you go up one class none of those except maybe the anxiety of nuclear war obviously none of those stressors affect people in that higher class they're not in any debt um they probably don't look at a grocery bill um you know they don't they don't have to worry about a mortgage or making rent payments uh, if they have an emergency they don't <clears throat> let's put it this way for pe for working class people there's no there's no there's no floor um there's always a ceiling when it comes to wages but there's no floor if 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 one thing goes wrong in your life and you fight you run into financial hardship you can lose your house which a lot of the time means you lose your job, which means all of a sudden you go from being okay, kind of your basic needs met, to fucking nothing. And that is a stressor that people in that higher class don't ever experience, especially if you own a home. You know, even if you lose your job, at least you have a fucking roof over your head. Um, those are stressors that people in the upper classes just do not have. They don't exist. And... If you look at the documentation, if you review the documentation, you can see that link between income and various mental health disorders. In addition to that, that's not even considering um, the generational trauma and that, that effect on personality disorders, mm -hmm. on developmental disorders, on learning disabilities. Because don't forget, ACE, also known as Adverse Childhood Experiences, has a massive effect on, uh, on you developing a myriad of different mental disorders. Where is this generational trauma coming from? Well, in our, in our sort of immediate sphere, chronologically, uh, the biggest generational trauma comes from wars, like World War II. And your grandparents passed that on to your parents, who passed that on to you. There are studies on that as well. Many fucking studies. Um, so when you add all this together, you have to ask yourself, 
What would our mental health landscape look like under a system where none of this is present? You live under a system where your basic needs are a right. They're not a privilege. They're a right. You got a roof over your head. You got three squares a day. You got, you got hentai. You got attack on Titan every single season. Um, you know, you've got, you've got, you're all caught up on one piece somehow. Um, all jokes aside, um, think about what that would look like. There's peace. There's no, there's no wars. Nobody's traumatized from being th- thrust into a world war for the existential survival of their people. Think about what the world would look like. And I feel like the DSM, by definition, would look very different. For one, I don't think we would have a cluster B at all. That's a radical take to anyone who's also studied psychology, but I will I will say it. I don't if we had a cluster B, it would be far more rare than it currently is. Gabor Mate is actually really good on this. Opinion on something that has affected a few friends of mine recently. Sure. So some of my close friends have struggled with anxiety and panic attacks. These are guys in their late twenties, early thirties. Right. Um, I just wanted your opinion on whether you think this is always rooted in childhood, and is there any practical advice you'd give to someone who's um, trying to get to the root of it? Sure. So in general, I believe that most mental health disorders, in fact, I would say almost every mental health disorder originates in childhood experience and it originates as a coping mechanism. Now, if you look at anxiety, if I were to pull a gun on you, you would not be anxious. You'd be afraid, as you should be. So when are we afraid? When we're threatened with something either something bad happened to us or something that we perceive as we need as something that we need is threatened to be taken away from us now in the early child's life in the young in, in the young child's early life anxiety is an attachment alarm what is the child's biggest need attachment with the parent connection with the parent when the parent's not around the child should feel some fear that serves a positive purpose because when a child feels fear he cries, she vocalizes, and that brings the parent. I mean, look at a mother cat responding to the kitten's cries, you know, immediate. And the same with instinct, with, with, with human beings who are still connected to the parenting, inst- parenting instinct, they will respond to the child's cry for help. So that fear is adaptive. So it's, co- it's a coping mechanism. But now what happens to a person whose parents are taught by medical experts, like I used to, until I learned otherwise, or others, not to pick up the kids when they're crying. Now that natural fear that causes the crying, that brings the parent, which ends the anxiety, is embedded in the child. So what begins as a coping mechanism now becomes generalized. So under certain circumstances, there should be fear and anxiety. But when I have this anxiety, when there's no immediate threat, what is that about? It's not a response to anything external, it's the embedded anxiety that I developed as a child. Now, in a society that makes people more isolated all the time, where, where, where human social contact is replaced by the rather cold and and, um, impersonal world of the internet. And when people under genuine threat, where where young people have less opportunity for meaningful employment and belonging and a sense of purpose than than their parents used to, there's more general threat. Now when that general threat hits people who are in childhood, over immersed in anxiety that's not relieved by the parent coming to help them, now you've got an anxiety situation. So when it comes to your friends with anxiety, I would um, get them to really look at the childhoods and to recognize that that anxiety is really the cry of some desperate childhood part of themselves for help. That last part about um, isolation in the internet is uh, definitely relevant. 
joke. That that's that became more relevant after COVID, and it's only gotten worse. And that's why we kind of like stay on top of like the again uh, the the fourth industrial revolution, uh, the new AI tech, the this the cybernetic where we're essentially morphing with technology the sooner to the future we get. Um, and that's only going to cause more and more isolation. Again, like we'll, we'll, we'll be in the metaverse. Is that ever a life? Yeah. And the thing is human beings are social animals. We do need, we do need one another. We do need uh, to connect and, you know, uh, interfacing through these devices, while it can, uh, well, it can mimic that. You know, I, I don't feel like it's the same as real, actual human connection in genuine community. And the more we kind of slip into this digital framework, the more we're going to lose that. Um, you know, like, I always, I always talk about it this way. If you're playing a video game with a bunch of online friends, do you There's still feel, there? But I mean, you know, do you still feel a little lonely? Because I do, um, and I'm an introvert. So, like me, being lonely is rare, kind of. I like just living in a cave all alone because people are draining as fuck. Um, but still, you know, it's not the same as having genuine connections, doing things with people. Um, you know, this is this is just part of what we need to do. And I don't know if it's the right direction to be teaching. I don't think it's the right direction to be teaching people and and helping them with accepting this reality. Um, I've always felt like under the capitalist framework, there is a part of therapy that can be argued is inherently reactionary because you're essentially being conditioned. You are you are seeking help to deal with the status quo, to deal with reality, um, especially the medication aspect, like antidepressants, where they're like, "Here, we'll make your brain." We're, we're gonna get into that. Well, I have videos that are kind of like talking about that, that therapy yeah. aspect. But like, I, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to like get get this going because I got a I got a hard stop soon. Like, I, I'm gonna do thirty one thirty five. I'll do. Thousands of years, people. But this is a uh, Thomas uh, Schwaz. He, he's he he he's a psychologist, uh, well respected psychologist who who basically just he just he he basically says mental illness is basically just not real. It's not natural. It's not natural at all. Um, we would be like if it, if it didn't if it didn't exist like if we didn't exist within the framework of the late stage capitalist system and you know like future cyberpunk technology. Which is like close to where we are, honestly. Um, it, we we, we none of, none of us would be feeling any sort of like like it would basically be like ma mainly presence, like how I would I would assume animals are. People looked upon life as a veil of tears. That's a Catholic expression. Mm -hmm. And you wait until you die, and then you'll be happy in, in the afterlife. That was the whole idea throughout human history until the last 50 years in America. Uh -huh. In Eastern Europe, I don't think people expect to be happy, like here. In Eastern Europe? Yeah. Eastern Europe's been under communism for... Right, they expect to be free. Quite a few years. Not, not happy. Right. See, freedom gives you the opportunity to be unhappy and not to be molested for it. I look upon the mental health profession today as a gigantic apparatus of molestation. Molestation? That's a loaded word. Yeah. How do you mean it? Intrusive. Mm -hmm. Intrusive. The average person doesn't know how to resist mm -hmm. mental health help. Look how much of it is directed to the three helpless groups, children, old people, prisoners. Prisoners are full of psychiatric drugs now, <laughs> right? They go to jail for drugs. They go to jail for drugs, and then they get, they get go to jail for the drugs they like to take, and then they are, when they're in jail, they are forced to take the drugs they don't want to take. Mm -hmm. They put you on like six medications. This shit is crazy. 
that in some ways characterizes the American drug scene today. The drugs people want to take are illegal, and the drugs they don't want to take, psychiatry forces on them. And the mental health profession does not complain about this. On the contrary, it supports this. So, I mean, if, if you think about it this way, um, <clears throat> you're forced to pay a rent, which is only getting more and more expensive as time goes on. And, I mean, you could be homeless as an alternative option, but then you, you'd get the police up your ass and probably get kicked out. So I'm not I, just for time's sake. I'm just not even about applying this. Morning. Oh shit! We have some breaking news. What? Breaking from unusual Wales International Longshoremen's Association (ILA) and the United States Maritime Alliance have reached a tentative agreement on wages to return to work on Friday. Wages go up by sixty-two percent. Yeah, it's, it's tentative. Yeah. Mm. It's close to what they wanted, though. Um. And of course, the comments are just fucking filled with, oh, the reactionary seething is incredible. Oh, my God. Wait, what kind of re I, I'll, 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 I'll check that out later. Um, anyway. But the, the huge myth here is that, like, not only is it, is the center of all mental illness. By the way, Gabor Mate also says that uh, ADHD is caused by trauma. I agree with that. Um, I, have, I have long said that ADHD, I, I, that's actually fairly documented as well. It's, it's documented as one of the, one of the main like risk factors for ADHD um, is childhood trauma. Let me see. No, let me see. I I, I talk to myself all the time. I'm doing this. I do too. It's mostly I'm, I'm managing like five things at the same time, looking at like two different screens. But no, uh, man, we we're all behind. I like I like, I, I like uh, what's his name? Bolson. Yeah. He has a bunch of videos, but. Uh, Therapy is basically, I mean, and I'm not saying that therapy is like useless. I mean, like the, the problem with therapy is that it's like centered on you when it should be, it's, it's gatekeeping radical change in order to like kind of. Yeah, you can just, you can just say it's an, it's inherently reactionary because it is, it is a tool that helps you better deal with the status quo. A lot of them are liberals or conservatives anyway. So, I mean. So like. <clears throat> So, like, if you deal, you know, if you deal with uh, medication and techniques of various kinds and talking to someone once a week, if you use that to deal with the distressing feelings that you are feeling uh, as a product of a broken system that is not working for the majority of working class people, um, you are going to be better off than someone who takes that energy and invests it in other ways of alleviating um those distressing feelings. Uh, it's like many other things. If it persists after that, then yes, all of a sudden therapy, uh, certain medications become extremely helpful, especially if you do have actual you know, conditions where you produce less serotonin in your brain, for example. But as a general rule, I feel like it being the first line of defense against you know things like depression and anxiety well you know you need to you need to explore more things you know it could be that it's just completely valid that you should be depressed and anxious because th th that's what everybody is feeling you know it, we're going to get to a point where everybody has a therapist and everybody's on drugs because everybody's being crushed under the same fucking system and at that point it does become mental illness it becomes mental normalcy you know that's what they want to normalize they want to normalize your misery that's the problem I'm seeing with it. But I'll never say that these things do not have direct benefits. They absolutely do. 
I'm just urging people to explore a broader context than the one that is in this vacuum of, I, I have mental health struggles, uh, and I just need to be able to deal with the symptoms without looking at any of the framework of causes. That's all. I mean, the reality is like, you know, it, it's, it's normal to feel bad sometimes, you know, that's, that's kind of just like what being a human being is. And I, I think there's like kind of like people who kind of like, you know, mistake that for, I guess, I mean, it, there, there's, a, there's a, there's a very big difference. Like it, it depends, it depends on how debilitating a certain illness is. Um, but there's no way to being, you know, Yeah, this is a this is a quote from who who said this. Being well adjusted to a sick system is um. Yeah. It is no that's measure. Kind of a, that's a succinct. That's a succinct way of putting it. Because, at the end of the day, if the system is broken and you're, by default, just completely well adjusted to it, well. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You shouldn't be well adjusted to this. It and I believe be they are. Blood. Go ahead. Sorry. And I believe they are traumatized. How could they not be traumatized? But it's not because of some childhood bully or some toxic relationship or what have you. No. They want you to misidentify the, uh, the source of your trauma as being one of these very mundane, you know, common unpleasantries of life that everyone deals with so that you won't actually identify the fact that you are traumatized by your whole so-called civilization. But yeah, pay a therapist, you know, pay a therapist so they can make you think that the one who's sick is you and not your society. Therapists are the power structure's first line of defense against revolution. The source of your problem isn't in you, it's the gatekeepers of revolution, the first line of defense against revolution. Yep. Structure's first line of defense against revolution. The source of your problem isn't in you, it's all around you. And that's why they want to keep you navel gazing. Now, I will make a bit of a caveat here. There's a bit of a caveat here, okay? This isn't a binary sort of situation. I'm saying that with someone who has a fair degree of expertise here. Because, as you are, and, and doing things to facilitate a better system, you're still going to feel anxiety and depression. You're still going to have mental health struggles, and it is still important to take care of those in that moment, uh, because you will then become more useful to your cause. So this isn't like a throw everything out with the bathwater sort of thing. But there needs to be more talk about the underlying cause of all this. So I can't, I can't in good conscience say, yeah, you should just like throw this shit all away. First off, because it's very irresponsible. Um, uh, and secondly, this can still have some benefit. Um, the problem I see is that far too many people, all they do so go to the therapist, get on the drugs, and they just trundle on along um, for the rest of their lives, you know? And um, I, I want a system, I want a world where people are truly ha happy, not just numb, not just okay, not just not anxious. Your, your, your baseline should be thriving. Your baseline should not be, thank God I haven't had a panic attack this week. Thank God I can get out of bed today. That should not be your baseline. So. so let's. I, I thought. I thought this was pretty eye-opening too. It's the way that the modern therapy functions too. Mm -hmm. Opinions that's going to get me JFK'd, and I am okay with that. Western psychology and therapy has bred a lot of abusers, manipulators, and gaslighters. Y'all have turned your sadism into self-care, your barbarity into boundaries. It just gave you the language to do so. Y'all would rather pick up DSM-5s than do a little self-reflection. 
You have learned to pathologize why you are a bad partner, friend, child, or parent. Instead of just saying, why would I want to help you move? You say, I don't have the space for that right now. Instead of saying, I don't want to listen to all the bullshit going on in your life. You say, I can't have you trauma dumping on me. There's a lot going on for me right now. Instead of saying, I don't like talking to you unless I need something from you, you say, I'm full at the moment. I'm at capacity for this kind of thing, but I'll reach back out to you when I can. (laughs) Y'all are so anti-communal and therapy is the perfect space for that under the Western model because it rewards hyper-individualistic behavior. Western therapy tells you it's all about you, babe. It doesn't look at anybody else around you. It insulates you. It's insular. It puts you in your bubble. It says you're the focus. It doesn't make you look outside of yourself. And y'all love that. It makes you bad people. It makes you worse people. That's I mean, the reality. Like, the, I, it actually does. It, it, it breeds narcissists. I think, like, CBT kind of stuff. Like, like hyper-focusing on, like, yourself. I mean, it depends on, like, how the situation to situation, obviously, but it's you know. Well, again, again, it's like I discussed. Um, you need to explore why you are. Perfect example from that video. You have to start asking yourself questions like, "Why am I at capacity right now? Why don't I have the space to do this?" Um, Why don't I have the gumption to be communal or help that person move? You know, why? She kind of gets it. Yes. uh, But there's a reason why you're so fucking drained and unable to do these things. And that's being redirected into an individualistic framework where a lot of the time the the solution to these problems lies with community, with banding together with people, with reaching out. It doesn't mean CBT is worthless. It doesn't mean uh, mindfulness is worthless. Absolutely not. But look at these as tools for a bigger picture than just, I feel bad, I need to do something about it. No, you need to be asking yourself, why do I feel bad? What's wrong in my life? Why are these things wrong? What are they caused by? What can we do about that? Got to start thinking of like, why are so many people anxious? Why are so many people sad? Why are so many people traumatized? Why do so many people struggle, struggle with regulating their emotions and start connecting the fucking dots? Also read Marx. You'll figure it out. I'm always just going to say that because like you'll, you, you'll figure it out. Sorry. Yeah. Read angles, read London, read, read all you can read. I am. I don't watch TV. I mostly read to be honest with you. Actually only read Trotsky. Don't read any of these. <laughs> I don't most, I don't only read theory all day. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like, I, I mostly read as opposed to like, uh, watching like TV. My fa- my favorite theory is probably Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like Garfield. Garfield's great theory. I love I love that th- he was really on the nose when he talked about Mondays. That's uh actually that kind of I don't know. I feel like we could kind of connect that. Cuz it's like his hatred of Mondays you could argue is the result of the capitalist system because it represents the return to a week of exploitation after several days of taking a break from said exploitation. So really, you could say Garfield's kind of a comrade. He's got an eating disorder, sure, but 